डेली टेस्ट डेली हेलो सर हेलो माय सर संजय आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन एजुकेशन इज स्टॉपिंग इफ यू विल एड्रेस दिस पॉइंट ऑन प्रायोरिटी वेन यू गो बेट टू इंडिया we will appreciate and i think this is a okay. open loop okay what i like to do is i like to take about three questions at a go so ma'am please thank you so much sir a very good morning to you my name is sudha venkatram and i actually don't have a question i have two words for you thank you thank you for putting india on the map a blue india a modern india which we are all very proud of and like you said you know we are also a fan of india right now and thank you for being that person was um you know who is willing to say it as it is we are willing to call us pay the spade and sometimes a bad or two of you need to be diplomatic about it but thank you for putting that face of us we are extremely proud of being up we said often enough to you but we we want you to know that we are very proud thank you so much मीटिंग्स with certain opposition leaders in their state it is not so difficult to imagine what kind of discussion took place i don't think the indian government had any knowledge of these secret meetings i think what is your question whether we had knowledge or no no this is a main thing is sir that i'm creating a discussion to give you my final Paragraph, which is coming there now soon. Okay. <laughs> so then, if things turn off like this, I think the government should give a green signal to uh, signal before these meetings take place. Now, now comes the question: What is the government view on these these uh, these uh, serious okay. solutions? Okay. 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 I, I, I think I got. Just as last last word, the serious mission which could lead uh, to progress for the community and the country. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, one more. Who would like? Who would like? To no, I better with the mic close. <laughs> Hello, uh, thank you once again, and it's really an honor to be here. I'm Priyanka Das Gupta from the International Electric Technical Commission. a sister organization of ITU as well um my question is you talked about looking to the future and next week in fact the new york climate action week there is also the summit of the future and i know you will be speaking at the general assembly as well so i was interested to learn more about they will be speaking there about climate action sustainable development digital inclusivity and are there any priority areas that india is looking to position itself as a leader or for champion as much thank you okay let me very uh, you know take these questions uh, one question. oh, sorry yes so oh. no, no, let, let me finish this round I'll, i'll come back to you uh you know the voting issue look we very much uh, understand the desire of indians who live abroad uh, to participate uh, in the democratic exercise after all uh you know uh, you do want to contribute or to help shape the direction in which it's going but here's the problem uh, the problem is uh, today there are i would say roughly about 20 million citizens of india who live abroad across countries you know we can't 
we can't say if we extend voting rights that we'll do it in some countries and not some other countries. So we'll then have to, if you even contemplate, I'm putting other issues aside. I mean, just look even at the logistics of it. You really then have to undertake an electoral exercise across 193 or 195 countries of the world and you can see what the challenges of it uh, are. I think what uh, we uh, do try to encourage uh, is for people during that period to come back. Uh, hopefully, as our airlines, I told you more airports, more aircraft. <laughs> so keep traveling to India. Even my tourism requirement would be done if you bring five Swiss friends along. Uh, but uh, right now, honestly, uh, for uh, see for those who live, if citizens who live abroad, it's a different issue. Those who've taken nationality of other countries, that's a different issue. They will try to use OCI as a via media. I think that's really, in fairness, the, the picture that we have at this time. Uh, on the, you know, people, uh, diplomats uh, meeting uh, people, uh, look, uh, I, I would only, uh, you know, uh, say this, that, uh, I mean, in fact, I would make it in a way a bigger issue, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, when I say bigger issue, I'm not making it a bigger problem. I'm just uh, giving you the larger principles of it. What happens in many countries is that countries often practice abroad what they're sensitive to at home. So whenever people do any such thing, they must also think about what it would happen if this happened in their own home. You know, it's, it's something they should think about. Uh, so, uh, I, I spoke earlier about, you know, even rankings and, you know, comments about politics of other countries. I have no problem if people comment about our politics. But then, I think in fairness, they should also be ready to hear my comments about their politics. And believe me, they have very thin skins about that. So, so the, how to get a more mutually respectful world, you know, more equal, more, because everybody says they are equal, they don't actually behave, you know, it's a bit like uh, animal farm, some are more equal than others. Uh, so, how do you actually create that? I think that's also one of the big debates which is uh, today uh, taking place in the world. On the summit of the future, uh, on the summit of the future, uh, yes, I, I mean, to me, there are uh, there are a whole lot of concerns. Uh, one big concern we have is how much sustainable development goal targets have fallen behind and how little attention is really being paid to it. You know, lip service is being paid to it, but practical steps are not being given. And I, I can tell you, you know, uh, I'm, I'm saying this by virtue of my travel. There are still large parts of the world which have been so devastated by the COVID that even today, they haven't gone back to pre-COVID levels. That their spending on health, their spending on education, their economies have shrunk. Uh, their confidence is broken in many cases. So what do we do for that post-COVID repair? How do we get the world back on track? I think that's a very big issue. But in terms of what can India do in a way as an exemplar, if I were to pick something today, not just for the summit of the future, but generally, I would actually pick our digital, you know. If there's, if there's one thing we've actually been able to demonstrate, you know, when we had the G20, uh, we, uh, in the next hall to where the leaders met, we created a kind of a shopping system. But we told everybody, we'll put, you know, we'll give you a phone, we'll put money in your wallet, now you don't pay cash. We want you to use the UPI and do that transaction. And for people, it came as a revelation. You know, when they see, when they see banana sellers on a rally on a street, actually with a QR code, that's when they realize how deep actually the embrace of uh, digitization has been uh, in the country. And uh, I think if you look at the uh, the deployment and the application of of not just digital technologies, but digital mindset. The people are willing to use that. Uh, I mean, today you don't need a wallet when you leave your home. You need your phone when you leave your home. You look, you know, just look. But our transactions may sometimes be very small. Look at the volume of that transaction. 
that you know we are generating between 10 to 30 billion uh, fintech transactions a month i mean there are countries who don't do a third of it in a year so so i do think uh, uh, for the rest of the world both as a example as a sharing uh, as a platform on which other things can happen it's had a huge difference in governance i mean most of you would would actually be experiencing it without even realizing it what difference it's made on passports but if you are able today to you know forget that era where we wrote letters to your rpo to say is you are you really you please confirm uh, that era is now behind i mean the missions have a database if somebody loses something you know they check the database figure it out and give you an alternate passport it couldn't have happened without that and there are many countries which struggle with that even now even sometimes developed countries which uh, you know if you, you know it's very interesting if you look at digitization is not a function of either income or even of capabilities there is some other factor which is a policy a leadership and a policy embrace of digitization as a societal tool and as a governance uh, kind of uh, mechanism so i would actually focus most of all that so can i take one more round dr presenter my my name is sora pleasure to have you here There's a headline going on in uh, viral in India social media since yesterday that Dr. Jay Shankar blushes as the ambassador calls him uh, the star. I would like to understand among all your peers of all your foreign investors, who do you consider the star? Why? What will you do? Or <laughs> like uh, uh, strengthen India's relationship with that country? And no diplomatically correct answer, please. Honest. <laughs> Hello sir. Uh, this is sir. Uh, hi, I'm Puru, uh, student at the Graduate Institute in Geneva. I have a con- uh, question concerning the students uh, here. Uh, generally, we uh, acknowledge the fact that the Permanent Mission and Consulate General is taking a lot of initiative to uh, include students in its activities and events. But there is still a uh, long way. Like we don't have uh, the the permit uh, we have a permit issue that we student face after graduating that we cannot work like our counterpart or our uh, colleagues can work easily so how can the ministry uh, better help in this i'll i'll pa- i'll deflect it to you later uh, you had a question yes yes to you feel in our country i observed in switzerland there is a system this if you want to be a multi modal transport So if that type of thing is introduced in our country, it will be good for the visitor to visit the areas. That system is available in India, so we are just visualizing our country. You know, so it will be useful for tourists. It's a good one. Okay, I'll take one. Hello, sir. Yeah. So I remember this. It's lost. Uh, I thank you very much for all the data that you have presented, and I love data, and I'm really proud of. The way India is progressing, uh, but I would like to ask you that I, I maybe I missed, but the data regarding the sexual assault happening in girl, on girls and women safety was I couldn't hear it from your data. I would like you to I don't want to remind you, but you know the number of incidents that are happening in India. It's uh, there is a movement going on currently all over India and around the world. Finally, give me your thoughts. Why the justice of Archikar Medical Hospital case is delayed by more than one and a half months? Sure. Last time, no justice has been given. Thank you. Can I take one more and complete the round? Can I speak without a mic, sir? Your voice seems clear. Uh, I am Anand Sharma. I am the head of the cabinet to complement. And I see it one four, which was hijacked to the other than 1999. And there's been a movie which was released uh, recent, uh, a series actually. It's more what I'm saying is more of a statement, and also if you can uh, comment on that, they've shown me into a life, but that's a personal story. They've shown the bureaucracy and the people who are dealing with it in very very poor light, and it's been exaggerated. And I, as a proud Indian, feel very strongly about it. And uh, um, you could add a comment on something like that because I've dealt with uh, people. At those levels, Mr. Global, uh, for instance, and 
this is just one saying, these are the people I was in regular touch with. And just for your questions. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, I, I think this, this is, uh, so, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm not ducking the question, but I'll tell you in all honesty, what happens is, uh, uh, when you meet other foreign ministers and I think everybody evaluates everybody, it's very natural. Uh, there are people who've been there for a long time, uh, and, uh, uh you know, uh, again, I would say roughly half the world's foreign ministers are people like me who are diplomats before they became ministers and about half would be people who had no foreign policy background uh, and became ministers. Uh, when you evaluate people, uh, if you ask me a single, you know, name that one person, uh, I would find it very hard honestly to do that because I would see different uh, strengths in different people. There are people very dogged, there are people very skilled, there are people very charming. So what happens when you go through life, you, you meet people, you kind of say, you know, oh, okay, I, I must remember that the next time. Oh. So you keep picking up, it's like a self-improvement uh, sort of uh, technique, you can say. So I am in a way ducking your question because, you know, there are 193 foreign ministers, you name one, I've just made 192 enemies. <laughs> I don't think that's a smart move. Uh, but uh, honestly, there is, uh, you know, uh, there, there are, I, I've really learned to, uh, to uh, from, from a lot of my peer group and, and uh, often, you know, like in any business, people sit down and chat and uh, exchange notes. Uh, so that's really the way the, the business works. Uh, on the work permit, I, I honestly don't know. I have the ambassador here. If there is an issue, uh, today uh, I'll, I'll take a briefing from him. If there is something we need to do with the Swiss government, I promise you we will. I do want to make one point here today. We are very strongly committed to uh, promoting a global workplace for Indians. Uh, we want mobility and migration to be legal. We want students to be given a chance to work. Uh, this is very much an important part of our foreign policy, uh, not just in Switzerland, across the world. And it is something, you know, we will apply in equal measure in Switzerland as well. Uh, your suggestion uh, on uh, the multimodal ticket, I, I think is a very good suggestion. Uh, you know, there are, look, there are many areas where we are still growing, uh, I mean, sometimes growing the capabilities, the infrastructure, but often looking at other people's best practices and, you know, uh, it's certainly something which uh, needs to be uh, thought about. I, I would say a country like Switzerland certainly in tourism uh, can be, can be for us a very, very uh, good partner. Uh, regarding the uh, women's safety issue and the, uh, you know, the RG car case. Look, I don't think there can be a single person in the country who's not outraged by what happened. And you can see that on the street. Now, the, the fact is, uh, women's safety, crimes against women is an issue in, in our country. It is, I mean, it may be an issue in other people's countries as well. That doesn't, uh, mitigate it, uh, in us. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, reminded uh, in a way of something once the Prime Minister said. Uh, he said it from the Red, Red Fort. He said, you, oh, I mean, he said, all of us, we give, we say things to our daughters when they go out uh, late at night to ask them things. Do you, hum, you know, do you do that to your sons? So there are, you know, I mean, it's, it's really in many ways, it's a, often a specific issue, but there are larger issues. And that is why to me, you know, there are so many aspects to this problem. I mean, it starts with, first of all, the idea of, of uh, you know, respect and equality and, uh, uh, and in a sense, the kind of non-discriminatory uh, opportunities which are given. And I think, you know, uh, to ensuring today the safety and security of women is a, is a very, very big issue. And I don't think 
and uh, I mean, if you ask people what you think about it, I think there would be a unanimity of opinion. What is today, ha you know, happening there? I mean, there are other aspects of it. I don't want to go into anything political outside the country, but uh, you know, all I can say is, uh, I'm sure, like you, you know, everybody in this hall, like me, would have that very deep sense of outrage and anger at what happened uh, to to that doctor. Uh, on uh, the hijacking issue, you know, I, to be fair, I haven't seen the film, so I don't want to comment. But I'll tell you something interesting, which you may remember. Uh, in 1984, there was a hijacking. Uh, I was a very young officer. I was part of the team which was uh, dealing with it. And uh, uh, a few, midway through the hijacking, I realized, uh, not midway, ab about three, four hours, uh, I actually, those were the days you didn't have cell phones and all that, so, and I had a small, uh, my, my son was uh, a few months old, my wife used to work, so it was my day to go back home and feed my son at lunch, okay. So I rang up my mother actually to tell her, look, I can't come, there's a hijacking, and then I discovered my father was on the flight, okay. And uh, it was, the flight ended up in Dubai, uh, it's a long story, uh, but I mean, fortunately nobody got killed, uh, but it could have ended up wrongly. So I know what, you know, uh, and, and it was interesting because on the one hand I was part of the team which was working on the hijacking, on the other hand I was part of the family members who are pressing the government on the hijack. So actually I had that very unique uh, window into the, uh, you know, on both sides in that sense of, of the problem. So I do understand, you know, often these are situations. I look in movies, you know, movie guys don't make the government look good, you know, then nobody look at the movie. <laughs> the hero is supposed to look good, no, not you. <laughs> so, so I think we've got to accept that as as par for the boss. 